A co-worker a while back brought me a feather pillow that his grandmother had made for him and asked if I could repair it. The fabric was worn thin on several seams, so I just tucked them in deeper and whip-stitched the edges so he could get more use from it. He then asked if he bought the fabric and feathers if I would make three more pillows for his children. Of course I said yes. Silly me. This is the standard blue ticking. Its stuff is tough and will wear for years. Its twill, rather like denim, solid cotton, and is usually blue and white striped. It's normally 30 to 36 inches wide. You'll need to decide what size pillow you want and how many to decide how much fabric you'll need. These were standard pillows, so they would end up 20 by 26. Before you do anything else, zigzag or whip stitch any raw edges so that it does not ravel. Then throw it in the washer to pre-shrink it and to remove the sizing. Dry as usual. Then you'll need to iron it to get out the wrinkles and don't skip that step. Next comes cutting the fabric. And remember to add a quarter to a half an inch for seams on each side. I cut a long rectangle. One long side of the pillow is only folded and not seamed. Once your pieces are cut, zigzag the raw edges first unless you're using a serger. Fold your fabric with the right sides together matching up the stripes and set your stitches to the smallest your machine will do because you don't want feathers escaping. Sew your seams and on one short side leave an open area like this picture shows. You can do a quarter to half inch seams. Slightly trim the corners so you can turn your pillowcase right side out and have nice looking corners. And once again, iron it so the seams don't sink inward and the opening lays flat. Trust me, you need to do this to not be frustrated later. On to stuffing. These are chicken feathers, just the soft down from the chicken's belly, no pokey pins. But do this outside and not in your house and not on a windy day. The feathers weigh, weigh nothing and they go everywhere. These feathers came in a plastic bag and a box. So I put the pillowcase inside the bag and kept it as closed as possible while stuffing handfuls of the feathers into the pillow. The pillow will not be stuffed tight, but it will be full, and remember it fluffs. The next thing I did was to whip stitch the opening closed. You don't have to be super fine as you're, it's going to get machine stitched. And the last thing I did before bringing the pillows back in the house was to get rid of as much feather residue as possible. The tiny fluff sticks to the fabric like pet hair, so I brushed them with my hands and beat them and fluffed them. Then I used two inch wide packing tape wrapped backwards around my fingers and used it to brush the fabric even more. I used two pieces of tape per side. You could use a lint roller if you have one. Duct tape would probably work as well. Then I finally brought them into the house, held them by the end that had the opening and shook the feathers down. Now I could fit the hand sewn area onto my sewing machine to run a top stitch seam to seal in the feathers. A final fluffing and they were done. They turned out terrific, but it was a lot more work and time consuming than I thought it would be. I spent some time sweeping the porch and really needed a shower afterwards. You can buy feathers in bulk on Amazon and the ticking you can find in most any fabric store. So, happy making pillows!